All right, welcome to video one. I'm Sam with Influx Data, and, and this video is the first of a series of tutorials on the Flux query language. If you don't even know what Flux is, you might be in the wrong place, but you're welcome to stick around either way. This short intro video will cover a first query using a query builder, and then some of the underlying fundamentals of what Flux is really doing under the hood. What's happening under the hood is a pretty critical thing to have ingrained when we work more closely with Flux itself. There's a not a prerequisite, but an, an assumption that people listening to this video or watching this video understand the influx DB line protocol and the, the data model to some degree. You don't have to know that to understand what's going on, but it will help you to better really take more away from these videos. So without further ado, welcome to the, the 2.0 UI. We're, we're not going to explore this so much, but we are going to use the explore tab because that's where we'll write our flux queries. So let's jump in there. So quick anatomy down here, what I'm circling is the query builder. It's a GUI for generating flux queries. It'll also be where you write your flux queries when you come over to script editor, but this is a great thing, a great tool for generating flux. Um, in the beginning of, of creating a query. Maybe you can you can write your whole query this way, but sometimes you can't. So anyways, we'll, we'll use both. Up here is, it'll be really obvious in a second, but um, this is where your data is visualized. So you'll we'll see a line graph here and then we'll, we'll work with tables and stuff like that. So let's move into the data. So my, I know where my data is. My current live data is in Sam Bucket. Uh, for this exercise, I will use disk IO to measure my disk throughput. Uh, to get the throughput, we'll get reads and writes in bytes. That's all we'll do for for now. So this is, uh, we, I could make this query a little more advanced from the GUI, but for now, let's just get the data and filter it and submit the query. And we'll notice that we have a line graph here. Now, uh, what we are seeing here is possibly not immediately intuitive. So we've selected two fields, right? Two influx data fields. And what you might expect is to get something like two columns or two series because we've got, we've got uh, selected just two fields here. Uh, let's explore why that's not the case. So maybe for, at first we'll take a look at the legend on this graph. So we see in this legend that we have read bytes there under field, we have our measurement, and we've got two two columns, host and name. Those are tags. Moving on to another one, read, we have read bytes here, we've got read bytes here, we hopefully you see write bytes. Yeah, there's write bytes down here, so it looks like our disk is doing reading, but not so much writing. But we'll also notice that our host values are changing, and so are the name values. So host is obviously the host from which this data is coming from. Name happens to be, because I know this data, happens to be the name of the actual storage device. You'll notice VDA1, um, SR0, SR2, and so on. So what's happening here is we're actually getting read bytes and write bytes from each host and each device within each host. That's more clear if we view the data itself in, in the tabular format. There's two ways to do that. It's very popular internally at Influx to use the raw data function. This is what this is what you see here. This is basically the raw annotated CSV response from the engine. So we'll actually go through this in a little bit more detail and probably a follow up video. But know that this is available to you. You can you can look at types and and you can kind of see the organization of tables this way. Um, but let's go over to tables so we can change the visualization type into a table. This is what I like to use most of the time because what it does is it gives you this kind of index of the group keys of each of your tables. What group keys are, and I'll also use the term table keys in this series uh, interchangeably, are the things that distinguish your tables. And what and one of those fundamentals I alluded to in the beginning is that Flux returns a stream of tables. It's a, a concept that you'll want to have ingrained. Each of these tables that, it, that is returned in the stream of tables is defined by a table or a group key. Those table keys, by default, if you're not using a grouping function, are going to be the same as the 
data as the uh, series keys that, the, that you had stored in InfluxDB. So remember measurement and tag set and field key are, are what's determining your individual series. So without grouping, you are getting a response of the individual series um, by default, which is a nice convenience function for working with InfluxDB. But that is that may be unintuitive at first, right? So that's one of the things you want to just make sure you you have an understanding of while you're working with this data. Um, with that, I will conclude this video, and we'll I'll see you on the next one, and we'll we'll dive deeper into actual flux when we go over here and click this script editor.